It has been 35 years since Eric and Lyle Menendez shot and killed their parents inside the family's Beverly Hills mansion. So was it motivated by greed or years of sexual abuse at the hands of their parents? The brothers first trial resulted in a mistrial, but in the retrial, they were found guilty of murder and sentenced to life in prison without parole. The brothers defense attorneys say the trial was rigged in order to hand the L.A. County District Attorney a win after losing the highly publicized O.J. Simpson trial. Our Mary Beth McDade takes a look at whether justice was served or if the brothers were misjudged. MB. Sharon Micah, most of the Menendez family members who knew about the sexual abuse believe the brothers should have been convicted of manslaughter, not murder. Now, if they had, Eric and Lyle would have been released from prison many years ago. 24 family members have now signed a petition asking that they be freed. Well, tonight we take a look at the new evidence that could change everything. Who was the person that was shot? It was late August 20th, 1989, when news broke of a gruesome double murder inside a Beverly Hills mansion. The victims, a wealthy entertainment executive, Jose Menendez, and his former beauty queen wife, Kitty. The world would later learn the killers were their sons, Lyle and Eric Menendez, who were 21 and 18 at the time. I think the biggest misconception that people have about the Menendez case is these were a pair of greedy rich kids that killed this lovely couple on Sunday night in Beverly Hills because they were in a hurry to inherit their parents' money. And that's not the real story. Journalist Robert Rand covered both Menendez trials and remains close to the Menendez family and the brothers. And in his books, he talks about how their brothers shotgunning their parents to death had nothing to do with greed. It was all about self-defense. I believe that Eric and Lyle are incredible survivors of, um, you know, just crazy uh, sexual abuse, uh, but also physical and mental abuse. The Menendez's relatives were aware of the trauma going on behind the gates of the Menendez mansion and supported the brothers back then. What I'd like to say is that they're innocent. And still do today. Most family members believe they should have been convicted of manslaughter, not murder. Diane Vandermolen is one of the many relatives who used to stay at the house and testified at the first trial. He and his dad have been touching each other and he indicated that it was in his genital area. She says when she told Kitty what Lyle had shared, Kitty said he was lying. Eric and Lyle also gave heartbreaking testimony. My dad had been molesting me. He raped me. The brothers said they were driven to murder after a lifetime of abuse and feared their parents were about to kill them to prevent them from exposing the family's dark secrets. Kitty Menendez had recently bought two rifles that were loaded in a closet upstairs. And uh, there were a series of confrontations in the final days before the killings. The first trial resulted in two hung juries, one for Eric, one for Lyle, split along gender lines. Men wanted murder. Women, like juror Hazel Thornton, wanted manslaughter. First of all, I believed their story, that they had been abused and that they had killed out of fear and had not planned the killings. Thornton tells KTLA the men didn't believe boys could be molested by their fathers. A lot of people at that time in the 90s knew little about child abuse. District Attorney Gil Garcetti decided to retry the case. Then, between trial number one with two juries and trial number two, something very significant happened in Los Angeles. Joe J. Simpson verdict came back. The, the LADA's office lost that case. It became a firestorm. Garrigo says with Garcetti up for re-election and needing a win, the second trial was in essence rigged. The brothers were tried together. Most of the abuse evidence wasn't allowed and manslaughter was taken off the table. He changed it in a way that was significant, that basically directed an all or nothing, a murder or an acquittal. The brothers were found guilty of murder and sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. I think if people knew more about what really happened in the first trial and what happened in the second trial, 
they would see that it was a miscarriage of justice. A habeas petition has now been filed asking the courts to look at the rule changes between the two trials and at some new evidence backing the brothers' abuse claims. A newly discovered letter Eric wrote to a family member months before the killings about his father molesting him. And the claims by a former member of the boy band Menudo that Jose had raped him while Jose was the head of RNC Records. Now the world watches and waits to find out if after 35 years, the brothers may finally be set free. The judge issued a uh, informal order asking the DA to reply. The DA has been taking this very seriously. Now, we asked Gil Garcetti if he would like to be part of this story, but he declined. The Los Angeles DA's office is supposed to come back with a decision next week about this petition. Micah? Mary Beth, thank you.